When many motorsport fans think of rally racing, they think of Subaru. This Japanese car manufacturer has risen to become a legendary name in the worldwide rally scene. We thought we would explore the rich history behind Subaru's rally racing and speak to one of Subaru's past drivers, Chris Atkinson, about his experiences. Subarus are known for their distinctive blue and yellow color scheme. Made famous by the renowned 555 due to Japanese tobacco sponsors. Subaru's real entry into world or rallying began in 1989 when it joined forces with ProDrive, the UK's base motorsport preparation specialist, to campaign the new Subaru Legacy RS. The company did compete in rally events in the 80s but had little success. This changed though during the 90s and many World Rally Championship titles have been claimed by the Subaru World Rally Team, six to be exact. It has won the Manufacturers' Championship three times in 1995, 1996, and 1997, and the Drivers' Championship three times in 1995, 2001, and 2003. To this date, Subaru has competed in the WRC longer than any other vehicle manufacturer team in their current form. During this time, Subaru has seen some of the greatest rally drivers in the hot seat, including Peter Solberg, Colin McRae, Richard Burns, Carlos Soins, and Chris Atkinson. Along with the car evolving from the original Legacy RS in 1989 to 1992, then evolving into the trailblazing STI tuned Impreza from 1993 onwards. This model has had many chassis changes and facelifts over the years. From its classic chassis to the Bug Eye and Hawkeye models, the setting not only the rally scene alight but also the normal roads as an avid fan base and following ensued over the years. I thought it would be an amazing thing to hear from a real legend of the rally scene about the opportunity to drive for this record-breaking historic team. A huge thanks to 2005 and 2008 Subaru WRC driver Chris Atkinson, aka Atco. Welcome, Chris. What made you want to be a rally driver in general? Um, I actually didn't set out to be a rally driver in a way. I didn't, like, that wasn't the goal. There wasn't, like, a, a plan to do that. Um, I was just always into different sports, uh, motor, motocross, jet skiing, other sports. Um, and it was more, um, I found something that kept my attention, like, that was interesting. I was actually at university, um, so I started quite late, but because of all my background in motocross and stuff, it sort of had a bit of an idea. Um, so I started really late compared to most people but picked it up pretty quickly and it caused because it got my attention and i put a lot of effort towards it um and it was entertaining interesting and i was straight away reasonably good at it so then i kept at it um so as much as i played column cray rally and i watched rally on tv it wasn't like oh, i want to be a rally driver you know there wasn't that thought um it was just something mm-hmm. that came across my path and i was reasonably good at it um and like I said, it got my interest that I was able to put the, I liked it enough to put the effort in to be good at it. Um, and that's what made the difference. Did you do any other motorsports other than rally or just rally? Uh, really, once I got going, there was some circuit racing and like I said, motocross when I was probably from 13 to like 15 or 16, I did motocross and I think that helped a lot. Um, but a lot more injuries in motocross and broken arms and shoulders and things like that. So you, I, I can't say I was the I was reasonably good like at state level in motocross, but I wasn't going to be a, a awesome supercross racer. Um, 
I just didn't quite have it in that sport. Um, and I feel like the older I got, the more I understood um, sports. So I'd go back to a motorbike when I was like hopped up in rallying a bit. I could just hop on a motorbike and go. Like I just understood it. I, I could process the information a lot better. Where when you're 13, 14, you know, you're not not really understanding all the details. Where once I saw the professional side of car racing, then it was easy to see how to get the most out of a motorbike. Did you have any inspiration growing up when you were like a driver or anything? Um, yeah, obviously guys like Colin McRae, uh, Tommy Mackinnon back then. Um, yeah, those sort of guys was sort of what you look at. And then in Australia, guys like Ed Odinsky, um, Possum Bourne, Neil Bates. Um, and it's funny how sort of all those guys had influences on me during my early stages and, um, and gave me a lot of advice along the time. So... Um, yeah, it's um, it was it was a cool time in rally because the cars were still pretty raw, and um, I think it was a more exciting time in rally, um, <laughs> like those late late nineties, um, early two thousands. Was um, the cars weren't really heavy, heavily aerodynamically controlled. The differentials weren't super clever, um, so it was a bit more raw and uh, natural style of driving. What would you like, like, love to see in rally, considering it's changed so much over the few years? Um, I like that they're going back to like the old rallies, like Safari, things like that. I think that's really cool, like to keep that rawness. Um, and I wish I got to do a Safari one year; that would have been uh, would have been awesome. Um, it's it's challenging because they've they've got to cater to the manufacturer's needs. Um, but ideally, I wish that were the problem is manufacturers aren't making cars really that are suitable towards rally, and um, yeah, so it's it's hard. Like I wish they never went to the micro cars like the Yaris's and the yeah. um, things like that. I think the bigger cars, but then what the manufacturers do, the manufacturers stop making them. So it's it's a it's a tough situation. Um, I do like what Hyundai are doing and Toyota, the fact that you can buy like a GR Yaris or you can buy an i30N and I'm sure I wouldn't be surprised if someday soon Hyundai come with like an all-wheel drive road car, but they've almost gone the opposite way about it to what Toyota and Subaru, they actually made road cars that were cool and then turned them into rally cars. Now they're making road cars that are boring and then turning them into rally cars and then <laughs> figuring out how to make it make it cool. Um, so it's, it's like they have to, the manufacturers have to be braver in that sense um, and they're the ones that really drive the sport. Like they're the ones with the power. They're the ones that fund the teams. So without them making cool cars, um, I think that's the key. Making the cars closer aligned to the rally cars, but you've still got to have the WRC cars because WRC cars like that, that pinnacle car, that's cool. What do you think about what Subaru do now? What do you think of Subaru's state now? Like the cars they make? Uh, it's pretty boring, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it's really boring. Yeah, it's such a shame and uh, such a missed opportunity. Um, just so conservative. Uh, it's just sort of underwhelming. They had such a prominent position and I don't think they understood how powerful that brand was in rally. Credibility they got from being in rally and that people, like up to a few years ago, people would still think I was racing WRC for Subaru. Like, that, like that's, it was that powerful a thing that it, 10 years after they stopped, they were still seen as a better world slowly vanish and they'll just become a another boring car manufacturer um they were in a ferrari style position um and they gave it away yeah do you think they'll ever come back um i highly doubt it unless someone comes in basically with the balls <laughs> because it's got to be it's got to be like Toyota did or it's got to be someone up high it's very high has to have a passion for it and if there's no one with a passion for it, then it will never happen. Sadly, in 2008, Subaru announced that they had accomplished its sporting and marketing objectives in WRC and that they would withdraw from the team. The decision was namely made by Subaru's parent company, Fuji Heavy Industries. Furthermore, many believed that the economic downturn would be a major part in this decision. But... The history and legacy continues to live on and it's cemented with those amazing drivers and cars that grace the forests and the roads of the WRC.